Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, 10 tips for better drilling. Consider this, the humble drill. It seems like the simplest thing in the world. You want a hole, you grab one of these and one of these, and you start blasting. Now that's pretty much how I thought about drilling when I first started making knives. But the fact is drilling accurately sized and accurately placed holes that actually go in the direction you want them to go, that's a little harder than you might think. And it's really important to good knife making. So today I'll share 10 tips about drilling precisely zero of which I knew when I first started making knives. <laughs> Use a sharp drill. Man, I mean, this seems so obvious when you think about it, but it's easy to just reach in some bucket of rusty old drill bits, grab one, and start yanking the handle on your drill press. But if you're drilling tool steel, a bit that works great in plastic or wood or something soft like that may just completely fail. So don't wreck a $200 knife by being unwilling to drop four bucks on a new drill bit. So footnote here, machinists call this a drill and they call this a drill. Everyone else calls this thing a bit, whatever. The reason machinists just call it a drill is because they distinguish between twist drills, spade drills, spotting drills, counter sinks, and so on. Fine, but I'm not gonna lose sleep over calling it a bit. Use a drill press. Now again, this may seem a little obvious to most people, but the single biggest thing that you can do to improve your hole drilling is to use a drill press. Even the cheapest piece of Harbor Freight garbage is a quantum improvement over a hand drill. To me, the sweet spot for starter drills is in the $200 range, where you'll get a decent consumer level bench top model with a half inch chuck and somewhere in the third to half horsepower motor or a used floor stand model from a solid brand like Craftsman or Jet. Those will be a little bigger and have better horsepower and rigidity. Use a drilling vise. Now after a drill press, the thing that will most improve your drilling or you know, certainly is the best bang for your buck in terms of drill improvement is getting a drilling vise. You can get super cheap ones from China, but as in all things, better is better. So more mass, more rigidity, and more ability to preserve flatness and squareness will result in mo better drilling. Of course, that comes at a price. This Kurt here is actually a milling vise rather than a drilling vise and is the king of vices, but you can use them as drilling vices too. Same goes for tool makers vices, which are really nice because they're machined square on all sides and can be flipped around easily without messing up the squareness of your work. The main point here is to put your work in a vise that's nice and flat to the table, then to position a big, heavy, stable vise rather than just sliding some tiny little piece of metal around on the table having the drill walk on you, grab the work, and so on. Machining parallels like this are extremely handy in keeping your work up toward the top of the vise jaws. Even if you're using an amazingly horrible vise like this, with jaws that won't remain even vaguely parallel, you can set up your work on top of these parallels, tighten it, which will crunch your work up out of parallel due to play in the jaws, and then you whack it back down with a mallet, restoring it to parallel. Use the right bit. There, I said it, bit. Sorry. Anyway, I used to figure all drills were the same. You went to Home Depot, you grabbed a drill bit, and that was that. But the fact is there are a ton of different kinds of drills out there. In terms of materials, you've got high-speed steel. That's the cheapest and most basic. You've got cobalt drills, which are harder and tolerate heat better. And then you've got carbide, which are very expensive and also very, very hard. 
First, personally, I wouldn't even consider buying high-speed steel drills for knife making. Cobalt is just way better and you can still get those at your hardware store. But beyond that, it's really handy to have a couple of countersink drills, a couple of spotting drills, and a carbide drill or two in case you run into hardened steel or a handle at work hardens and starts burning up your cobalt or high-speed drill, whatever. Now you can find all these specialized drills online from places like MSC, Granger, Pen Tool. There are a whole bunch of different industrial suppliers and uh, you, you can find a lot of stuff there. Use lube. Yeah, put all the jokes in the comment section down there. But seriously, using tapping fluid, cutting fluid, sometimes the, those terms are used interchangeably when you drill. Uh, steel especially, it really extends the life of your drills and sometimes helps you get through a material that otherwise really might challenge your drill. You can use 3-in-1 oil or some other kind of shop type general oil, but you're better off using more viscous oils that are engineered specifically for tapping and drilling. Tap Magic and there are a whole bunch of other brands. They all work fine and they're nice and cheap. I use tapping fluid constantly and I probably don't have to buy a new bottle more than once a year. Use a reamer. Your basic twist drill is made for removing a lot of material, not for making super accurate holes. You know, it's fine if you're just making a clearance hole, something you're pushing a bolt through or whatever, but if you need a really accurate hole for a tight-fitting locator pin or a folding knife pivot, something like that, then you need to use this. This is a reamer. It looks very much like a drill, but it's not the same thing, and these will make holes to much, much tighter tolerances. They're not made for drilling per se though. You have to drill a hole that's within a few thousandths of an inch of the reamer, then the drill is swapped out and the reamer is used just to slightly enlarge and finish the hole. Make sure to use plenty of tapping fluid for a nice clean hole. Again, you need to buy these from industrial suppliers like MSC, Granger, and so on. Use the right speeds and feeds. By that we mean speed or RPM that the drill spins, that's speed, and the rate which you crank the drill into the work, that's what's known as feed. So the bigger the drill bit, the slower that you want to run your drill. Now there are little charts on the side of your drill press that'll suggest the right speeds for various materials, but those really won't help you with, for instance, tool steels, titanium, these kind of hard to machine materials. So manufacturers of drills generally have charts on their websites with recommended speeds for all kinds of different materials. So those are worth checking out. It's a common problem to run drills at overly high speeds and wear out a bit prematurely. But also, and this is a little counterintuitive, if you're all nervous about wrecking your bit and so you push the drill into the work too softly, you can actually end up work hardening the steel and or burnishing the cutting edge off the drill. In either case, you just toasted your drill. High carbon steels in particular will work harden if you drill at too high a speed or too low a feed. So put a healthy amount of pressure on the handle of the drill. It takes some experience to feel it, but to me, as you're moving down through there, there's a sort of crunchy feeling that you can actually feel in the handle when the drill's biting correctly. Use a spotting drill. So if you just chuck up a twist drill and yank on the handle of your drill press, there's a good chance that your drill is going to walk, meaning that just before it bites into the work, it kind of skitters around on the surface of the material. So the harder the material is, the worse the problem. So it's a big deal for knife makers who work with a lot of really hard materials. So the result when that walking thing happens is that the hole gets drilled somewhere other than where you meant it to go. That in itself is bad enough, but it'll also go in at a wonky little angle, which can not only result in a hole that's not perpendicular to the face of the material, but it might even snap your drill. So what's the solution? Spotting drills. Spotting drills are short, rigid drills that are just built to start holes. 
The idea is to precisely locate where you want your hole, then drill just a little bitty hole or dimple as a guide for your real drill. Then without moving anything around, without moving your workpiece or your orientation of the drill, you drill the rest of the way with a normal twist drill. Spotting drills can't feed chips out, so you can only drill a very short hole with them. But that's okay, that's not the point of them. While we're on the subject of accurate hole location, how can you go about getting a hole exactly where you want it? Well, here is a sort of multi-step process that might help you out. So first, measure as accurately as you can and just mark the location that you want that hole to be. Then, use a prick punch, which is a real skinny little punch, to make a tiny hole at the exact point that you want that hole. Then you use a regular center punch to make a bigger dimple. And then you carefully set up your work on the drill press so that the drill goes right smack down into the middle of that hole. And then, and only then, do you finally start really drilling. Now, this is a pretty darn slow process, so is there a better way? Yes. Unfortunately, it means that you have to... Buy a mill. A mill, preferably with a DRO or digital readout, will allow you to drill extremely accurate holes. You just put your blade or whatever it is that you're drilling into the milling vise, and then you use the DRO to locate all your holes. You can theoretically locate holes to an accuracy of around a thousandth of an inch this way. Unfortunately, mills are really expensive, but if you're well down the road of making knives, you will not be sorry, trust me, that you invested in one. Now I recognize that this is out of the question for a lot of guys, but look, other than buying a drill press, it is the single biggest leap you can make in the quality and the speed of the holes that you drill. In fact, the leap from a drill press to a mill is probably even bigger than from a hand drill to a press. Okay, I hope this saves you a few of the years I spent blundering around when I first got started in knife making. Well, I mean, I'm still blundering around. That's half the fun of any hobby. But why not blunder smarter? All right. Thanks for hanging out with me and keep those knives coming. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!